I've been working with the channel Purple Insider to deliver great stories about the history of the Minnesota Vikings. Up first, a video about a speech made by Bud Graham before the 1985 season opener against the San Francisco 49ers that might have saved the team. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to watch now. And now, on with our feature presentation. When a player requests a trade, there may be a variety of reasons as to why said player wants out. From a lack of playing time, to a disagreement with a coaching staff, to a contract dispute, to wanting to play for a contender, to wanting to be closer to home, to family reasons, to anything else under the sun. I'd be here all day if I listed every single reason why a player would want to trade and request a trade, because you name it, it's probably happened. However, when said trade request is made, if it is commented on publicly by someone on the player's side, there might be a few parties that comment on the issue. Obviously, you have the player himself, but you might have his family member, a close friend or teammate, or most likely out of the bunch if it's not coming directly from the player, his agent. A player wants out, the agent publicly puts the pressure on the team to force the move and act in the best interest of his or her client. It's a tale as old as time, and that's what agents are there for, to help players get their way and maximize their happiness, and in many cases, their money. Well, in 2000, let's just say that this did not happen with the man that you've been watching this whole time. This is Buffalo Bills running back Antoine Smith, and in 2000, he was so fed up with the Buffalo Bills and their organization that he wanted out and wanted a fresh start. Now by itself, that's not much of a story. Something like that happens all the time. And heck, you might have known going into the video that Smith and the Bills were not exactly on the best of terms by this point in history. However, the way that the trade request happened was, well, I'm gonna be frank here, one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. And it's something so confusing that nearly a quarter century later, if that doesn't make you feel old, I still don't understand it in the slightest bit. Because after the trade request happened, we were left with way more questions than answers. And that's putting it lightly. Because this is the story behind what has to be. In the over 60 year history of the Buffalo Bills franchise, the craziest and the strangest trade requests ever. Before I talk about the actual incident in question and what made it so bizarre, we need some context to understand just who Antoine Smith is and why he even wanted out in the first place. When the Buffalo Bills drafted the Houston running back in the first round of the 1997 NFL Draft, in the hopes that he could complement and then eventually replace a fantastic but aging Thurman Thomas, they thought that he could become one of the best young runners in the league, even though he was already entering the NFL at 25 years old. And sure enough, at first, they were right. In 1997, he had over a thousand yards from scrimmage and was fourth in the voting for AP Offensive Rookie of the Year. And in 1998, he had over 1,100 yards rushing while placing inside the top 10 in the NFL in rushing touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons. More than anything else, what Antoine Smith was in terms of his play style was an absolute bulldozer who was impossible to bring down on first contact. Some of the runs that Smith had were like he was transformed into a semi-truck because he was just bowling over people. And even though the numbers declined a bit in 1999 with an underwhelming campaign, he had a big game in the wildcard round against the Tennessee Titans, where he scored two rushing touchdowns and averaged over 5.6 yards per carry in a game that the Bills won 16-15. Note that this final part may be inaccurate, as I turned that game off with 16 seconds left, so I'm assuming nothing funny or unusual happened afterwards. Anyways, entering the 2000 season, it seemed as though this was absolutely going to be Smith's team, and he was the primary halfback. The team didn't spend any high draft capital on a running back going into the season. Of their eight draft picks, they only used one on a running back, and that was Sammy Morris, who they chose in the fifth round. Thurman Thomas, the incredible Hall of Fame running back who had just under 12,000 career rushing yards with Buffalo and played there for 12 years, was finally gone. 
So no longer was Smith going to be splitting carries with the man that he was supposed to replace. Plus, you could absolutely attribute the poor 1999 campaign of his to a painful and nagging turf toe injury, which slowed him down and made him considerably less effective than he was in 1997 and 1998. So you had a man who was supposedly fully healthy again, and you had one less player in the backfield for Smith to split carries with, at least on paper. This meant that Smith was going to be the lead back, and was going to get the bulk of the work, right? Well, not quite. Because through the first three weeks of the season, Smith couldn't get anything going whatsoever on the ground. In week one against the Tennessee Titans, even though the Bills won, Smith did nothing, as he had 17 carries for just 42 yards, averaging 2.4 yards per carry. In the following week against the Green Bay Packers, the Bills won 27-18, but Smith got nothing going on the ground, with just 17 rushing yards on 12 carries, or an abysmal 1.4 yards per carry. And in Week 3, which was a 27-14 loss in the AFC East to the New York Jets, Smith only got 5 carries and ran for 13 yards. Through the first three weeks of the season, Smith not only had no rushing touchdowns, but had 72 rushing yards on 2.1 yards per carry, which is obviously not going to get it done. Now, to be fair, no one could get anything going on the ground, so it's tough to put all the blame on Smith, even though he was the lead back. In that Titans game, the other two running backs, Sean Bryson and Sammy Morris, combined for 27 yards on 12 carries, so they weren't any better. In that Packers game, Bryson and Morris combined for 38 yards on 14 carries. Not much better. And in the Jets game, Bryson and Morris combined for 49 yards on 15 carries. So Bill's runners not named Antoine Smith had 114 yards on 41 carries, averaging over 2.7 yards per carry. That's it. In other words, the whole run game needed to be thrown out the window and overhauled. And the offensive line was doing a terrible job at run blocking. No questions asked. But as the lead man, Smith was the man getting the brunt of the criticism. And after the Bills decided not to play Smith and try something else at running back, benching him for their Week 5 game against the Indianapolis Colts and their Week 6 game against the Miami Dolphins in favor of Jonathan Lennon, Smith was done. He wanted a fresh start. He wasn't feeling appreciated in Buffalo at all especially in light of how they handled the turf toe incident in 1999. He was not happy about his benching, was not happy about his lack of production, and was not happy about his entire situation, and he wanted out with one year left on his contract. And that's when he and his agent, Scott Casterline, got to work trying to orchestrate something. Said Casterline, we're trying to get Antoine traded. Antoine has been patient, and has never complained in his career. He played hurt on a painful turf toe last year. He needs to be traded. Head coach Lee Phillips and general manager John Butler told me he was the go-to guy, their franchise back. I feel like I was lied to. Casterline even added on this, it's frustrating for him. It could get worse. It could cat up as a disruption on the team. This is not good for the Buffalo Bills sake. I think there's some confusion among the coaching staff. Some people want Antoine, and some people don't. I don't see a resolution unless he plays somewhere else, or until there's a coaching change. As long as there are certain coaches on this staff, Antoine's best future won't be with the Buffalo Bills, which is too bad, because he enjoys the town and his teammates. Now, you had a ton of drama between his agent and the team. A team spokesman, Scott Birch told, said on Smith's trade request, We're not going to comment on it. We're not even going to confirm that this is true. Which is quite the comment, even if it is a no comment. And head coach Wade Phillips never said that he was done with Smith, and still wanted to have him work out in this offense. Said Phillips, I'm not unhappy with Antoine. I think he's ready to play. And he wants to play. He has a lot of pride. If he gets the opportunity, he'll do well. He's in a situation that some of our players are in. I expect him to be ready, and he will be ready. 
But just like that, you had the drama between the player and the front office. Smith wanted out, and this was well publicized. The team wasn't playing him, but they had no intention of trading him. And when the trade deadline passed, Smith was still there in Buffalo as a member of the Bills. So far, this is pretty commonplace, and it's not too much of a unique story. Incidents like this happen all the time. But now, it was time for Smith to comment on the matter himself. His agent, Scott Casterline, had done the talking for him, saying how he was unhappy, why he wanted a trade, why the coaches needed to go, and why he needed a change in the scenery to rejuvenate his career. So what did Smith say? Wait a second, wait a second, time out. Scott Casterline? What are you doing? You're not even my agent. Seriously, Antoine Smith's agent that was orchestrating all of this? Scott Casterline? Turns out, he wasn't even Smith's agent. That was a lie. Smith and Casterline used to be partners, but six months before all of this went down, very early on in the 2000 offseason, Smith fired Casterline, which raises the obvious question. Why on earth was Casterline representing Smith and talking for Smith if he wasn't Smith's agent? Isn't that, I don't know, a major violation of the rules of being an agent? Now, Smith wanted out, and he didn't deny that. So it's not as though Casterline was doing this out of thin air. Smith said, The trade didn't happen for me. I would like to be somewhere where I get an opportunity to get out and play. But I'm here now, and I've just got to make the best of it. If you feel like you should be playing and not getting a chance to play, if you want to be mad at me about that, you can do that. But I felt that was my right to have a chance to ask for a trade if you're not going to play me. However, Smith sort of buried the lead here by saying that Casterline wasn't his agent. Instead, his agent was a guy named Herb Rudolph. But as if this story couldn't get any more bizarre, you might be asking yourself the obvious question of why his actual agent, Herb Rudolph, wasn't the one speaking for him instead of Casterline. Turns out, and get ready for this, there was no Herb Rudolph. Herb Rudolph was a real person. He was an agent and he represented some NBA players throughout the 1990s. But of all the agents represented with the NFLPA, Rudolph was not one of them. If you went to the list of certified agents, Rudolph wasn't there. And this means, in this absolutely insane situation, you had Scott Casterline trying to negotiate a trade for Antoine Smith, even though Smith fired his agent months ago and wanted nothing to do with Casterline based off of the comments of Smith saying that he fired his agent and his working relationship with Casterline a long time ago. Smith saying that even though he didn't work with Casterline anymore, that the information was true. And Smith's actual agent, not just nowhere to be found in any of this, completely MIA, but not even certified by the NFLPA. Are you confused? Is your head spinning yet? Smith's actual agent is doing nothing and can't practice. Smith's former agent is speaking to the press on behalf of Smith. And Smith wants nothing to do with him and made it very clear that he's not his agent. Genuinely, nothing about this makes any sense. At least Smith finally got out of Buffalo after the 2000 season and joined the New England Patriots in 2001 as a free agent. But whether the Patriots and Bill Belichick were talking to Scott Casterline, Herb Rudolph, or a freaking ghost when they tried to sign him, I don't know. Nothing adds up. Antoine Smith, when he was healthy, was a heck of a runner. And there's no way that the Patriots don't eventually win Super Bowl 36 without his services, where he ran for just under 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns during that championship season. And all things considered, he had a heck of an NFL career, playing nine seasons, recording just under 7,000 rushing yards, and having 54 rushing touchdowns. That's nothing to scoff at in the slightest bit. But as confused as he made opposing defenses during his peak, that's how confused everyone else was 
trying to follow this insane saga where no one knew who was representing him or who anyone's identity even was. Why was Herb Randolph, a non-certified agent, representing Smith? Why was he not even there? Why was Scott Casterline, who cut off all ties with Smith and who was fired by Smith half a year before, talking on his behalf? Why was this all so confusing? I don't know. He's on third. And frankly, my head hurts too much to think about this any longer. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.